Hello everyone, in today's session we are going to discuss about uh, web services concepts. These concepts are very helpful when we are dealing with the integrations. Let's get started. So what are web services? A web service is a measure of communication between two electronic devices over a network. So first let's understand what is a web. So basically when you call any website like www.google.com, www.gmail.com, right? You are calling with the www. So what is that uh, www. So it's a world wide web. Okay, world wide web. The web is just one of the ways that information is shared over the internet. Okay, that is called web. So what is the service? So service is a kind of uh, program or method. Right? You have a service with you for your uh, company, for your organization, you developed a service. But you wanted to have it on oh, internet is called as a web services. Right? So any kind of electronic devices want to talk to another, right? For example, uh, laptop, mobile. So those devices communicated through the web services. Right? Okay, those services can be hosted over the internet. For example, let's say we are trying to calculate addition of two numbers. You are trying to prepare a web services, right? As a process, first you need two input numbers, number one and number two, right? The functionality of addition gives a result. Addition to addition of two numbers is a service. Okay, we have to write a program in order to achieve the functionality in any uh, any one of the programming language you can write the plastic in java or dot net any other programming language right once you completed the development you can host the service over the server right so server means in the internet okay so you can host the service any internet based server so anybody can access the, the services right that is called as a web service so this example just for adding the two numbers Right. For in the real time scenario, you can assume if you wanted to create a service uh, 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 which help to find the exchange rate or you want to find out a weather information on a particular city, you want to prepare a web services. Right. After prepare the web service, you can host the service over the internet. That means anyone can access that uh, services. Right. This is all about web services so basically web service is a piece of code piece of logic that is deployed over the server so we can categorize the web services in two types first one is the soap based web services and second one is the rest based web services so these web services are used to exchange the information exchange the data between two, two systems okay let's uh, go through the each and every concept then you can understand now we are going to take a dive into client server model or you can call it as a client server architecture and have a look at how the internet works via web browsers. Let's understanding a client. When we talk the word client, it means to talk of a person or any organization using a particular service. Right? Your client could be a web browser or mobile and Android application. So in the digital world, a client is a computer. Right? So what is the servers? Similarly, when we talk the word servers, it means a person or medium that serves something. In the digital world, a server is a remote computer which provides information. Okay. Now, let's go through the client server architecture, how it works. So, in this model, when the client computer send some request uh, to the server over the internet, so the server accepts that requested process and deliver the package packets requested back to the client that means the moment you send a request through the web, web browser to the server server process that information by interacting with the database and again send back the response to the client right so in this model okay client do not share any of their resources for example for this model is your email right Let's go to the next step, next topic, uh, the various types of web services. So now let's talk about REST web services. We can understand what is REST, what are the benefits. REST is easier to use and more flexible when compared to SOAP service. 
REST stands for Representational State Transfer Protocol. What does mean by State Transfer? Let me give you an example so that you can easily understand. When you open a web page using some URL to view an image on the server, the WW server will show you the image in some file format. That is called representation of the resource. It's an image file. Right? Next one, it is an architectural style for developing the loosely coupled web applications. So, what is the architectural style? This style defines that set of rule to be used for creating the web, web services. It follows couple of rules. Right? So, that's why it is called as an architectural style. What are the rules? The rules are, first one is client server architecture, stateless, third one catchy, and fourth one uniform interface and fifth one layered system okay so in the next topics we can discuss about these all the points so next point is it is lightweight and very fast all right so rest follows the http standards okay rest uses xml json and html formats to make the communication between two systems Okay, so that rest is very fast and lightweight. So next point is client and server are independent. It is easy to understand like Swagger. Uh, Swagger uh, earlier it is called as a Swagger and now it is called as a open API specification. Right, open API specification. So open API specification is nothing but it is a specification for mission readable interface definition language for describing producing and consuming and visualizing the web services okay so rest is the smaller learning curve so it is very efficient when compared to soap fast and uh, it's scalable and flexible okay it is very closer to other web technologies in design philosophy right in current technology world so rest is using very frequently for support the web services okay now we are going through the important REST communication flow segments. Okay. These five segments are very, very important when you are dealing with the REST web services. First one is the URI and uh, REST API URI. Second one is HTTP headers and parameters. And third one is HTTP methods. Fourth one response codes. And fifth one request and response body. Okay. So what is a URI? Right. So URI is nothing but uniform resource identified. Okay, it is a location of a web service. URI can be made up of several components including hostname, IP address, port number, path and optional query string. Okay. Now what is a REST API? A REST API is a way of uh, communicate two systems using HTTP technologies. Right. So REST API can share the data between two distributed applications. Right. So what is the format of REST API? Right. So, if you see uh, REST API format, it, it, uh, it is aligned with the endpoint URL and uh, API method and parameters. Okay. So, if you want to use any open APS, for example, I want to query the, I want to check the weather report, right. You have to use this REST API. And also, if you want to create a supplier in Oracle Fusion, if you are working in the Fusion projects, if you want to create a suppliers, you have to use the REST API. Right. This is the Fusion application uh, URL and this is the your REST API method. Right. So yeah, like this, we have a lot of uh, APIs. Okay. Uh, by using this APIs, we can create a, uh, we can uh, call the services accordingly. Right. Next one is the HTTP address. Right. Headers are additional pieces of information that sent along with the request to the server. All right. It is a metadata. So it contains your header information contains authentication properties, right? So authentication means how to access the web services. Okay. Uh, you can uh, have basic authentication. It's a simple authentication schema built into HTTP protocol. And, uh, and also you have one more authentication type realm. So a realm is a security policy domain defined for web services server, right? And also you have media type, context type and content type these are uh, these are mandatory which we can pass in the your header information right content type is nothing but uh, what kind of data type you are going to pass to the uh, web services what kind of data you are sending in your request it could be a text html right 
so this is this information related to the your uh, http address right second one is the http methods so uh, in rest rest will accept different kind of methods first one is the get method post method put method patch method and delete method so what is the get method so get method when we wanted to read some data or retrieve some data from the server you can use the get method right when you are working with the uh, rest web services if you want to read some data from your server you have to use the get method so what is the post method when whenever you wanted to uh, perform some operation in the database right if you want to create a new resource in the database you right you have to use the post uh, method yeah, okay what is the put right if you want to update some resources already exist in the server you have to use the put method right so delete if you want to re remove some resources from the server you can use the delete method and patch patch method it is similarly to like a put method only but whenever we, whenever you wanted to make some partial updates then you can use the patch method so next next important segment is response codes so when you are trying to invoke uh, when you are trying to call any rest web services in case of any issues uh, the first issue is like sometimes your web service is down you are not able to access the web services in sometimes uh, the provided url is wrong or sometimes due to validation errors you will get a uh, error response right when you call any web services either you get a successful response or a failure response for each and every response we have a indication right you will get a response codes right we can based on the response codes we can we can decide whether the transaction is failure or success right for 200 means it's okay indicates a successful response 400 is a bad request and 404 is not found that means uri path is incorrect let's see some other important uh, response codes okay uh, 401 is the unauthorized one that means you were provided a username password is uh, incorrect and 401 is not found and 500 is internal server error and 502 is a bad gateway and 504 gateway timeout okay so these are the important response codes which you need to understand when you are working with the rest web services okay next one is the request and response body so it is nothing but a structure of the your request and response payload the structure could be json or xml or plain text and html so now we are going to discuss about SOAP web services and also we will cover visual document. Uh, SOAP is called as a simple object access protocol. So we can use the SOAP messages for accessing the information between two distributed systems. Okay, but whereas visual uh, is called as a web services description long ways. So it is a long ways for describing the interfaces of web services. Okay. Let's discuss more about uh, SOAP web services. SOAP is a simple object access protocol. So SOAP uses XML messages for communicating the uh, communicating between two different systems, right? It is understand by any language. So you can call it as a language independent. Okay. It is a language platform and transport independent. SOAP is a protocol, but whereas REST is a service. SOAP uses uh, SOAP follows strict strict standards to allow communication between the client and server okay so it uh, so provides significant pre-built uh, extensibility in the form of wf standards okay so basically wf addressing is a standard for addressing uh, information to uh, soap messages okay so and also soap has its own uh, pre-built in uh, error handling mechanism let's see structure of uh, soap message okay it consists of uh, four layers in its architecture it has a header section and a body section and envelope and fault section okay so an envelope that indicates the start and end of the messages okay xml messages are totally enclosed by the envelope okay in your body section you can see the two parameters are defined so integer a and integer b and we have a operation addition this operation where it is going to calculate addition of these two numbers okay and then the and in the in the response section also you can see uh, there is a, the response is defined in the body section okay 
so uh, soap provides a full support to motor, most of the protocols like http and smtp it is a slower sometimes in performance in uh, comparison to the visdel document now let's understand uh, visdel document this is very very important concept because uh, when you are working with the any soap web services you need to understand the visdel document so that you can make use of this uh, visdel document in your integration right visdel stands for web service description language uh, visdel used to describe the web services particularly uh, visdel describes that uh, what particularly web service does and how it does and how how it can be consumed okay visdel is written in xml and uh, visdel is a w3c recommendation so the moment you open a web visdel document you can see different uh, methods and parameters and uh, uh, throwing a exceptions and endpoint address everything we can see in the visdel document okay so visdel can be categorized into two types uh, first section is the abstract section second one is the concrete section right in the abstract section we have types messages port types and operation and the concrete section you can see binding and service let's go through the visdel document format let's see the uh, visdel document format okay it has multiple sections you can see both uh, Uh, abstract and uh, concrete visdel let's go through the each and every section so that you can easily uh, use when you are working with the integrations right so in the abstract visdel you have uh, you can see types messages operations and port types right types defines the data types using xml schema basically defines the data types using xml schema so basically what is xml schema right xml schema it's just uh, validate the structure of your xml file okay it will check whether the format is xml format is valid or not right xml schema describe the structure of the xml document this is the format of your xml schema it start with the schema it has element name and also we can define the complex type we can mention the sequence this is the xml schema basically this is the the schema is grammar for your xml data right so why we are using xml schema in the real time in the real world xml world we are using hundreds of xml formats in daily basis right so all our xml uh, all xml data follows the xml standards right that's why we can use this xml schema format just we can validate your xml data right second one is the messages so message section you can see your input output parameters and return types okay it contains the data elements for each operation so what is the an operation it's a methods in any programming language like java pl sql right whatever the methods you are creating functions procedures everything is called as a methods okay so what is a port type it's a collection of operations collection of all methods is called as a port type so these are all about your abstract visdel and also you have a concrete visdel right in the concrete visdel you have uh, binding and also you have service so binding is defines uh, the protocol or data format for each port type that means what kind of uh, soap messages goes out at run time right it defines the message format and protocol information for operation defined by the port types okay so let's discuss about service so basically service this is the where of the uh, where the service are defined specify specify in the address where a bound operation may be found this can apply how the particular web services can be consumed right it defines the endpoint where the web services will be exposed it contain the uh, endpoint so your endpoints are defined in the your concrete visdel okay make this point very clearly so your endpoint your url is mentioned in your in our concrete visdel okay let's go through this document if you see this document right you can see see uh, you can see uh, types port types and operations messages and binding in the binding section you can see your endpoint url right in your uh, abstract section you can see input parameters and uh, your port types right uh, everything types everything is mentioned here right so while we are working with the uh, real time example we can test the one of the salesforce visdel document so that we can easily understand 